Melissa Benichai, everybody, come on. This is incredible. Oh, yeah. I am so Thank excited you. to be here. Happy National uh, Dessert Day. National, uh, Happy National Dessert Day to everyone. We brought you some cupcakes because I'm in. Exactly. Well, I'm very excited. I was going to say, I'm super excited to hear, not just because you brought cupcakes. Um, do you ever get tired of that, by the way, that expectation that everywhere you go, you're going to bring cupcakes with you? No. I think... People like me more. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. We had, um, not too long ago, Howard uh, Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks, and I was like, man, that poor guy, well, not literally, of course, but that poor guy, every meeting he goes to, everyone expects him to have coffee, right? Like, that's his thing. He's the Starbucks guy. So I was like, I wonder if that's something you got, like a burden you have to, like, there's worse things in the world. But everywhere you go, they're like, I'm so happy to see you. What'd you bring? I do forget sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I walk in, I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're only human. Well, you didn't forget today, we have this beautiful uh, assortment here. It, it says AOL. It's fantastic. We're going to dip into those as a group, uh, and we can't wait. So thank you for that. But I'm also super excited that you're here because I love, love, love your story. It's so cool. Uh, reading up on you, I, it's all these peaks and valleys. You're very much like this entrepreneurial, like, superhero origin story almost. And I was wondering if you could uh, just talk to us a little bit the start of Baked by Melissa and kind of what pushed you into this and how this whole thing kicked off. Sure. So like most people, I graduated from college. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I got a job in media and then moved to advertising. I was an assistant media planner at Deutsch working on the Tylenol account. I was called to HR one day over the loudspeaker. Thought I was getting a promotion, but I got fired. <sighs> How old were you when you got fired, if you don't mind? 24. Keep that in mind. Keep going. 23 or 24. Best day of my life. Didn't know it at the time. That's incredible. Went to my brother's office crying. We always wanted to go into business together. I had been baking these tie-dye cupcakes for everyone and anyone. If I loved you and it was your birthday, I baked you tie-dye cupcakes so for like two years. So I had already been known for my tie-dye cupcakes. So he said, go home, bake your cupcakes. We'll start a business out of it. The great big brother that he is. I listened. And that same night that I was fired, I baked 250 cupcakes. I sent them into work with my best friend's little sister, who was staying with me for the summer, interning at a PR firm. The owner of the PR firm loved them, put me in touch with her caterer, started doing events with him literally like a week after being fired, took advantage of every opportunity that came our way because I had the chance to do what I love every day. And fast forward eight years, AOL Build! Well, yeah. How many times have you had to tell that story? Because you went through that like a seasoned pro, I've got to tell you. Um, Many. <laughs> yeah, I figured as much. But I did want to bring it up just to give a little bit of context. There's a couple of things I want to unpack. So you said you loved uh, making these tie-dye cupcakes. When did, you, when did you start making them? How did you even arrive at the idea of a tie-dye cupcake? Because as you, you know, recently the world discovered tie-dye bagels and tie-dye everything. But you were way ahead of the curve doing tie-dye cupcakes back then. What, what, what's the origin there? So when I was working in media, my first job out of college, ugh, like terrible. The sales associate that's office was right next to my desk. We both love classic rock, Grateful Dead specifically. It was his birthday on March 1st. And I like literally that day, I'm like, what are you doing tomorrow to celebrate your birthday? He said, oh, I don't know, listening to music. So I wanted to do something special for him. I decided to make him Grateful Dead cupcakes. And they were red, white, and blue tie dye with the steal your face, peace signs, all that kind of stuff on them. That was the first batch of tie-dye cupcakes I ever made. I love that they were Grateful Dead. Um, and then over time, I just kept making them, and they got better and better and better, just like anything that you continue to do. For sure. I want to talk a little bit about, too, because your brother was the one that said, go home, bake your cupcakes, you're going to do this. So you guys uh, are sort of in this together, right? How's it like working with your brother? You guys, you've been doing this for a while now. Uh, you've got a good system down. You, you enjoy the process? You enjoy so we actually founded the company together. He yeah. was our CEO for eight wonderful years, and he just recently stepped on to work on some new projects, and we brought in a new CEO, Seth Horowitz. Who Exciting. Comes from Everlast. He's amazing. I can't wait to do, like, magical things with him. Um... I will say that I feel like I got my brother back a little bit because yeah. we truly are best friends and he's my biggest fan, encourages me every single day. So I think like it's healthy. Well, that's really sweet and, and congratulations. I'm happy for, uh, for you for that. That's awesome. Uh, and he does deserve, you guys have did this together, but I think there's a lot to be said for you too uh, as an individual who was fired, right? And then instead of 
having that pity party that everybody would naturally fall into of like, oh my God, I can't believe I was fired. This is so unfair. You turn that energy into this life-changing uh, event that you sort of have with all these cupcakes. How do you navigate those, those moments? What, what is it do you think about you as a person that said to yourself, I'm going to go home and make 200 You're cupcakes. setting me up to say what I want to tell <laughs> everyone, which is success is a mindset. It's really how you view your most challenging moments, frustrations, things that just don't go your way because everything that sucks is an opportunity to make it better, learn from it, and really spread that outlook on life to everyone you're around every day. And that's what I did when I got fired. That's what we do at Baked by Melissa every single day. If if one of my teammates is frustrated or upset, it's like, wow, well, this is an opportunity. How can we fix it? And how could you shine? Because you're going to fix the issue. For sure. And I, I didn't mean to put too fine of a point on it to set you up for that. But I think it's a really important uh, point. And I wanted you to say that because I think uh, there's so many people uh, that have somebody in their life that'll say, like, you know what you need to do? Get out there and do the thing that you love. And we're all like, oh, yeah, sure. But, like, you did it. You lived it, and you made that happen. So I think that perspective is really uh, valuable, and, and it's really important for people to hear like that. Yeah, it's it also works. it's valuable to surround yourself with people who love and support you, which probably aren't that many when you get down to it, but those are the people that you need. For sure. You guys have been growing, like, exponentially. How many locations are up to now? Like four, We have 14, 13, 13 retail locations. We ship our product nationwide, and... Oof, we're excited for the future. And they're all, I think all of them are in New York, except for there's one in Jersey. Is there? There is one in Jersey in the yeah. Garden State Plaza Mall, which is the mall I grew up going to. My mom would actually <laughs> drop me and my friend Allison off and then come pick us up. So So that's why that's, that's the only one outside of New York? And that's not why it's there. It's oh. just ironic. Um, okay. Well, we have one in Long Island in J, um, Roosevelt Field Mall. We have one in JFK Airport in the JetBlue Terminal. So no matter where you're going, you could bring Bates by Melissa. All right. So let's say you could... <laughs> Without uh, asking you to reveal any of your uh, super secret, awesome corporate roadmap, you could put another Bake by Melissa anywhere in the world. Where's it going to go? Pick a location. Anywhere else. Where, where do you think it'd be fun to have one? Keep in mind, you get to go hang out there for a little bit and observe, right? That's part of the job. You got to work. I want to go to Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Hang on. Is that a real place? I mean, I hope so. <laughs> it's not. I, I think, all right, you know what? Let's just agree that it is. That is a real place. That's where you're going to go. Second place, second, the second location. I mean, the answer is I don't know. If I told <laughs> you, I'm setting you up for, I don't know. But there are so many places. And really, I'm so excited about Let's this go. new chapter at Bake by <laughs> Melissa. I mean, we want to share the Bake by Melissa experience with more people. That's our number one goal. So we're going to get there, but I don't know exactly how, which is exciting. Well, it's, it's, um, it is really exciting time. You guys just recently uh, expanded the line. Now you have the, the gluten-free, the little macaroons, right? The... We have gluten-free cupcakes, and we have the gluten-free bite-sized double-stuffed macarons. Those things are... Can I tell you, uh, there's one of them, I think, um, I don't know if it's intentional, but it basically tastes like a little ball of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yeah. It's the Snickerdoodle one, I think, it's right? It's the Snickerdoodle oh, one. Oh, my God, those things are incredible. Thank you for those. <laughs> Thank okay? you. Okay, Thank you. That's so sweet. <laughs> um, so... Uh, what, I, I, then I think I've Try seen, them. They're so good. The macarons are amazing. They are amazing. Uh, Gluten-free or otherwise. Was that a challenge? I know it was, but I kind of want to hear a little bit more about this story because I knew it was really driving you nuts, like arriving at that product. Macarons are gluten-free because they both drove me nuts. Well, it's your both. There, got there time. you go. Your there both. you go. <laughs> nothing, nothing. What easy is boring. What was the Another hard, what was, what was driving you nuts about it? Just making them good? Okay. <laughs> so with macarons, I love macarons, but I had never made one. So I literally, uh, January 1st of 2015, locked myself in my apartment and learned how to make macarons. Did that. Um, Gluten-free, much bigger beast, was really hard. It took me over a year. And I refused to put out a product that if you ate it, you knew it was gluten-free. Right. Because we pride ourselves, I pride myself on our delicious bite-sized desserts. And if you're gluten-free, you need to get the same experience as everyone else. Mm -hmm. So we did that. Well, it's funny because, like, uh, and kudos, because you truly did. What's funny Thank about gluten-free is, like, so many people, it's such a weird thing because a lot of people legitimately, uh, for health concerns, need gluten-free food. Other people think it's become, like, a chic thing to do, so they're immediately turned off, like, oh, no, I want the regular stuff. I don't want the gluten-free because there's, like, this weird uh, negative misconception. But you guys have created gluten-free. It's just delicious. It's just really good. So congratulations. You hit the nail on the head. Uh, Thank you. 
to tie into a little bit, you guys, you're so busy. There's so much going on. You're chief product officer. Do you get to spend as much time in the kitchen as you want to? Like, is your day-to-day -day dramatically different now from when it was five or six years ago when you guys were, like, kicking things off? Yes, <laughs> of course. My role is constantly evolving with the company, but, I mean, this week is different than last week, and next week will be different than this week. This week, it's National Dessert Day, so I've been in the office, corporate HQ, a lot. Um, next week, I need to spend the entire week in the kitchen because I need to work on product. And so I wish there were maybe two or three of me. I want to be in the stores. I want to interact with our teammates. So... Um, I try, I spend more than half of my time in the kitchen, bakery, and I hope to continue to be able to do that. Is there something that uh, you really miss from like those early days, uh, from when things were just kicking off, or like, it's all good now? <laughs> Every phase of Baked by Melissa has been truly magical, and again, that's like who I am. I, I appreciate the moment. Um, hey, we started, I mean, the day we opened our first store, I met my husband. So I, that was, like, amazing. Um, then wait, we were wait, opening wait, stores, up. and what? I was, like, in the store, literally managing the employees and, like, learning that neighborhood of Manhattan. So that was amazing. And, yeah. Hang on. So you met, I didn't realize that. You met your husband the first day that you opened your first store? Uh-huh. What was that's so, uh, Tell us that story. What happened? Was he somebody? Was he buying cupcakes? I'll tell you the story because it's amazing and it just goes with the magic of baked by <laughs> Melissa. So we opened our first store in Soho. It was a bite size, if you will, pickup window that you couldn't walk into if any of you have seen it. And it was actually attached to a cafe, Cafe Barry. The building was rec recently demolished because they put in a Nike town, whatever. But it's fine. It was a moment in time. Um, we had that space for like six amazing years. Um, so anyway, opening day, I'm like this little girl, mentally like hadn't experienced everything I've experienced today. I'm freaking out. Who's going to stop at this hole in the wall and buy cupcakes that they've never heard of before? You're like 26, 25, still 24? 24 at 24. the time. 24, this is all within oh, this that is like first... all within. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm 25. Right, because you got fired at 25. I'm just... 24, yeah, exactly. Cool. It got fired in June, opened our first store on March 5th. My birthday's in January, so I was 25. Remarkable. Um... David Z was sitting next to me at the bar, who's like this character entrepreneur. I was like starstruck. He has all those sneaker stores in Manhattan. He's like your, your friend's dad that takes it too far sometimes. Real character. <laughs> he looks at the bartender at Cafe Barry, who's like serving me like ice water because I'm freaking out. And he goes, D, who is this beautiful girl? And the bartender looked me up and down, and he's like, that's my wife. And I was like, what a douche <laughs> who says that? But now he's my husband, and he works for us, too. It's a family affair. That's super sweet. Right he used to do well, deliveries for us. Incredibly sweet story, I think. That's, that's really sweet. Um, <laughs> I love Thanks. that your first thought of your husband is, what a dude. I mean, who says that? You got to put that in the vows, right? But everyone that... wants, like, it's a great story. Maybe, I, you know, it's great. Um, okay, so obviously you're known for your ridiculously delicious tiny baked goods. Um, what In the kitchen, I don't know why there's this weird idea that you're either a pastry chef or a regular chef, but... I'm not either of those. You're not? <laughs> yeah, you don't. I love arts and crafts. I love creating things with my hands, and I love to bake because you get to eat your project. So do you love to... That's hard to argue with that logic, by the way. Do you um, love to cook as well? Or do you, I you, love to cook. Yeah? Yeah, it's awesome. What's your go-to dinner? you got to throw something together at home. I am constantly evolving. Yeah. I really, like... I literally am in the kitchen all day. Even today, like, it's National Dessert Day, so I felt the responsibility to make amazing desserts for our entire office that were not cupcakes. It was... I was going to be asking ask you that. Did you? Um, those but then I'll well? go home and I'll, I'll make dinner. Were those it was fun. Were those also many? The other desserts you made or no? No, it was chocolate. Just we, chocolate. Because we did a yeah, we did a video and we had leftover chocolate and caramel. Oh, so so you grew up in just you were in the city a lot, right? Uh, so you're very familiar with the area. So I got to ask you, uh, how's your chicken cutlet game in the kitchen? Huh? You got a good breaded chicken cutlet? Is that like in your? Or is that just an Italian thing? Hang on. The, no, it's the, not just an Italian. That was like a New York thing. Don't we all at least know how to cook up a good right? Yeah, a couple of people. Fair enough. Uh, so go on. <laughs> I, I, may, I do make good you chicken make cutlets, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I haven't made one in a, little, in a while. In a while. Yeah, I, fair enough. I, lying. Oh. I made chicken parmesan at my parents' house last weekend. There you go. They enjoy it? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's a must-have tool in the kitchen? Something that if you walked in and you were like, where's my blank? A good knife. Ooh. Even, even when doing it that? It bothers me when there's not a good knife. 
How do you know a good knife? Don't just say sharp. It's sharp. Yeah. No, it'll that. like cut your finger off. I have scars everywhere, but for sure, it makes all the difference in the experience of creating. Yeah, it's funny. I didn't used to uh, think that until I tried to cut a tomato with a dull knife, and it was a nightmare. You need a serrated edge to cut. Well, it. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> I made all this tomato mush. Yeah, but also to shave the chocolate, you need a, a sharp knife. Everything. Yeah, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so I was wondering, Test Kitchen, you're making a lot of. What are some of the weirdest cupcake flavor? Like, what are some cupcake flavor fails that you've gone through they were like i thought this was good on paper but bacon. no one should ever bacon but bacon? i use beef jerky because we're kosher <laughs> <laughs> disgusting and like nobody felt like weird about being like melissa that's gross well so. did you at least after all right so you knew if it was going to go to market it had to be the beef jerky but after you did it and it was gross you were like all right we can never sell it but we have to at least try it with real bacon so we can make sure this is totally still no i just wanted to you know i i take everybody's feedback like to heart. It's that so weird I phase, right? Where like bacon was on shirts. Why did we do that, by the way? Like bacon was Bacon everywhere. belongs with the eggs. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Fair enough. Um, okay, so bacon is your weirdest one. Um, we already went over other desserts that you tried to shrink. You didn't. Uh, I know that PB&J is your favorite flavor, all right? But do you ever do uh, flavor combos? You ever put a couple together? I mean, are, yeah. you, are you fucking with me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, drop some knowledge. What are because, some of the like, things you do? Because my favorite thing to do with the cupcakes is to make cupcake sandwiches, and I've yeah. eaten like three of them today. I ate them before I ate anything else. Um, <laughs> peanut butter and jelly triple chocolate fudge is amazing, but right now our mini of the month is chocolate caramel crunch with yes. peanut butter and jelly is like, ugh. But really anything. It's a great way to experience more flavor combinations when you're having our wonderful bite-sized desserts. You could do it with the macarons, too. Uh, it's uh, Believe me, I have. And uh, sometimes I'll even like take them apart and put other new little macarons together. Um, but I was going to say, it's so funny that you pair them both with PB&J because my favorite, and I was so sad to see it go, was last month you guys did... Uh, it was like a banana with... Uh, oh, dude. That's actually... When you were dude. like, I know your favorite flavor is peanut butter and jelly. It's actually now peanut butter, banana. Peanut butter, banana, and chocolate. So uh, my, my wife used to make me... Uh, well, she makes me. She just hasn't made me one this year yet. Uh, and she's watching. She's going to be really mad that I said that. But um, what, we, what I affectionately refer to as the Elvis cake, which is like a banana bread cake with like this peanut butter fudge frosting and chocolate chips. And so when those came out... I think I got the email, and I'm pretty sure if you guys go check your records from whenever that mailer went out, I was the first guy to order like six of them. I was like, I need these, and they go really well with the peanut butter and jelly. So, did you like them? I love the point of all me of all of that was please bring them back. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> Fair. My vote. I mean, I hope to bring them back as well. Okay, fantastic. We're gonna throw to audience Q and A in a second. Uh, just real quick, I thought this was really cool uh, that you're teaching a class on the 26th in Hoboken. Is that happening? Tell I people know. about that a little bit in case they want to come out and learn uh, the secrets, the 11 herbs and spices. So, I'm teaching a class in Hoboken. It's dessert based, of course. My creative process, I think, is very unique because I learn how to do one thing and then I could do all different types of variations of it. So I'm kind of trying to teach that at Hudson Table, which is a cooking class in Hoboken. Hoboken. It's really cool. I dream that my kitchen will look like that one day. Um, yeah, it's October 27th. Uh, I wrote it down. Hang on. Let's see here. It's coming up. So Sixth, sign up if 26th, you want to go. Especially two, in the area. 26th. Yeah. I'm super excited. It's hopefully the first of many. Any fun little Halloween inspired things or no? Just, yes. I mean, like you're right there. We have a Halloween tie dye flavor that's yellow and orange with vanilla icing and it has white chocolate, but really orange and yellow white chocolate shavings on top. And then we're also doing cupcake mosaics, which is what we have here, but we're doing even smaller ones. So you can walk into any one of our Baked by Melissa stores and get a 25 pack that's actually a cupcake, a pumpkin or a Frankenstein. And it's great to serve to all of your friends because I think there are a lot of Halloween parties and we want to be a part of all of your moments. As you should. Beautiful. Uh, we're going to take some questions from the audience. While we're doing that, too, if uh, we can get... Uh, yeah, we're going to hand out some of the cupcakes to everybody so they can start chowing down. Cool. First question? Yeah. Hi, Melissa. My name is Gunjan. And as you said that you are having uh, several stores in New York and other places... And as you said, you yourself is involved in making the um, cakes. So suppose if you will go international, so are you open to that? And number two, if you will maximize your uh, number of uh, cakes, then are you able to do that or at this point of time or it will still take a year or so? So, loaded question. 
answer to the first question is we are we want to give everyone the Baked by Melissa experience, which means we are open to expanding everywhere, not only in this country. And as far as capacity goes, we manufacture our product. We're vertical. And we are always making sure that we're not at a point where we're going to max out. We're constantly growing and improving our current processes so we can continue to meet the demand. Awesome. Uh, next question, also in the front row. Hey, Melissa. Thank you for being here. Uh, do you have plans to expand the scale of the cupcakes? Like, you want to make cakes in the future? There are plans. I got to get to the kitchen and work on new product <laughs> this week. Um, but yeah, we're not going eh, I mean, who knows what we're going to make. But we sell bite-sized desserts. And our goal is to make people happy through that. So I'm going to continue in that category. Well, I will say it's funny. Uh, so I just got married back in June. And I went to your website like immediately looking to see like if you guys had a larger cake or something that you did that was special. But uh, your team, one, incredible. And two, we did get a couple of hundred and set them up. And they looked gorgeous, like on these sort of tiered platforms you, and stuff. Yes, that was what I should have so, said in response to your question, <laughs> is that we offer cupcake mosaics, which is better than a cake because it's bigger than a cake. You could design whatever you want it to be. You don't need a fork. You don't need a knife. We deliver it on those beautiful trays that are also packaging that you could set up. You could do, we did a 4,000 cupcake mosaic what? of Gary Busey's face <laughs> for <laughs> the last season. That. Wait a second. For the last <laughs> season premiere of Boardwalk Empire for HBO and he was at the event and he stood by that display the entire night like in disbelief. It of really looked like it. So we could do anything like a cake but better. Please tell me on your phone somewhere is a picture of Gary Busey having his mind continually blown while looking at his face in a cupcake, cupcake mosaic. Like that. 100%. Oh, it's so awesome. That's a life goal. That's how you know you've made that it. That was right? okay. uh, Next question. By the way, I'm going to start getting competitive now. If I don't like your question, I'm taking your cupcake away and giving it to the person next to you. We would never do that. Don't listen to it. <laughs> fine, fine. I've been overruled. Go on. <laughs> Hi. I just want to say, in my house, it's National Dessert Day every day, but Go you. unfortunately. Um, and you're very inspiring. I love what you say. I'm oh, in the right you. place at the right day today. But I just want to ask you, and I know you had family. I know you, you had your brother there. Um, I'm um, a woman businessman in New York. What was it? Did you, ha what was, did you have any experience being a woman that there were some blocks up, there were some walls up, things were difficult? Because I do. Great question. I get that question a lot. And at the beginning, I... I I shied away from it and I would say like, no, I don't. Like women could do anything. But yes, the reality is that sometimes that happens, especially if you're working in like a male dominated industry, let's say. But the truth is, don't waste a single ounce of your energy focusing on the challenge. Use that energy towards being freaking awesome because you are awesome and you could do anything that men could do, but more because you could have babies, you know? <laughs> So we're awesome. Your logic and nobody is could do what we do. And like really you just need to have that confidence in yourself and don't waste a minute of your time with the negativity. Because it was the first time that I ever had the experience of being talked down to as a woman. It was so I was like, wow, is this really going on? Their loss and like I that fuels me. When somebody tells me I can't do something, that makes me know that I'm going to do it because uh, even just to prove that person wrong. And you really have to be that self-motivator when no one else is there for you and just kick their butts. Terrific. Fantastic. Awesome. You, you are awesome. All right, let's go ahead. We got time for two more questions. Where's the next one? Uh, right in the front over here. Great. So my question for you is I've been a gospel spreader of Vegas by Melissa since the beginning. Love it. Thank I you. tell everybody about it. We use it at work. I take all my friends there, my students and everything else. Um, but my question for you is what's next as far as loyalty for the company? So... I know Starbucks and Chipotle and other folks have like apps and things you can earn rewards and points and kind of customize your experience. Do you have a plan for that in your, in your brand and the empire to make it even more connected to people? So we recognize that without you, you, all of you, we wouldn't be where we are today. Like really, it's all about you and also our team. So today is National Dessert Day. And if you walk into any Baked by Melissa store location at any time today and you make a 
purchase of $20 or more, we're going to give you a free surprise three-pack of cupcakes. And that's just the beginning. We have so much work to do at Baked by Melissa, and we just need to give you the ultimate experience by, by giving back, by making sure every experience that you have with us, whether it's in-store or online or at a friend's house, is completely consistent. We've got a lot of work to do, so I'm super excited. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, and our last question is going to be Hi. right there. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Melissa. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask you, how do you maintain a work-life balance? I personally love to bake myself, and what happens is after I'm done with work on Thursday, I'm pretty much missing for the rest of the week, and no one can find me because I'm just baking my life away. So how do you go between being so awesome in the kitchen and then being awesome in real life? Or does that just all go out the window? You just bake. There's no such thing as balance, I've learned especially since I became a mom, but that's why you have to love what you do. I go to the gym because I need more energy than everybody else. I think part of being the face, being Melissa was like boot camp for me very early on, and I was put in a position where I have to be happy every day, even if I'm not, and I have to be, if I'm in the office for a meeting and then in the bakery for another meeting, I have to be happy no matter what, and I think that was just a great lesson for me, and now I embody that, and I'm just appreciative, and I wanna share that, I guess. Like, you just have to set your mind to it and, and do things that give you more energy. So for me, that's going to the gym. Like, I literally don't have a second in my day anymore, like, at all, but I love it. I'm, like, running everywhere. My feet are starting to hurt. It's, like, 4 p.m. right now. <laughs> but it's Friday. I'm working tomorrow, but it's okay. It's great. I'm so excited. What? Or either you don't sleep, or when do you get oh, up? Oh, no, no, no. All this? I sleep. <laughs> I know myself. I, my, uh, my daughter goes to sleep at 7. I go to sleep at, like, I go into the bedroom at, like, 8.30, the, like, <laughs> latest. I'm not even joking. Like, I am really dedicated. So I wake up at 5. I start, and I end early, 8.30. Like, obviously, if I have an event or, like, Whatever, like plans, I stay out late, but late for me is like 10, 10 o'clock max. I need my rest. I, I get seven hours every night at least, sometimes eight or nine, which is so weird. <laughs> like, uh, like I slept eight hours and still woke up at 5 a.m., but that's what I need. So just you know yourself better than anyone, and you have to take care of yourself physically and mentally so you can be on your A-game all the time. Thank if you. That was the answer. Did I answer? Yeah, you yeah. did. That there's was a great no, answer. There's no hope for having it all. But <laughs> no, I but you do, just but I can do the go big in everything that you do. Just go big with yeah. 110. Yeah, thank you. I had a really big. I had a little coffee before I came here. Yeah, <laughs> but it but it was. But I love it that, was, that. I had a really big. Well, I no, had a it little. Was, it was um the it's the Starbucks right here. Yeah, with the like tap. Oh yeah yeah yeah. It's like um. The dry, like, uh, whatever it's called, but whew. Yeah, no, it's working. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to fall asleep at 8.30 tonight. How do you, uh, well, then, uh, just one more question, because after all of that, what do you do to, to treat yourself, to spoil yourself, to say, this is a minute for me? Do you take a minute for you to just sort of not be doing all of these things and conquer the world as you have with your mini cupcake empire so far? Like, is there ever a time where you can stop and say, these are my 10 minutes, these are my 20 minutes? I'm gonna hang out. With I get kid. eyelash extensions. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's me. So I, once life. a month. That's what you do. They that's taped what. my eyes closed for an hour, and like that hour is amazing. Like, yeah. <laughs> I I think well, when I first had my daughter, I would just sleep, <laughs> but now I like use it to think about new ideas. I don't know, but I guess like everything I do is ultimately for me. Like, sure. I have to. Yeah, be you happy never like to, sit back and like binge watch uh, Stranger Things. Like you, no, you, you're. I, I mean, no. Oh, okay. I love Ray Donovan. You're in for a treat. Really, Ray Donovan fan. Ray Donovan. I love like action and okay. stuff. I loved Weeds. Oh no, Weeds is a good show. Fair enough. We're getting off on a tangent. Uh, we could do this for hours. Thank you. So, uh, I just want to thank you again so much for being here and celebrating this holiday with us. Bringing thank all you. these cupcakes. Everybody thank enjoy you yourself. Everyone. Go to a bake by Melissa. Get yourself a free cupcake surprise today. Order online if you're not in New York. One more time, Melissa Benishai. Thank you all.